what I have there on the screen are um, the approximate dates that a lot of scholars will tell you where the, the four Gospels were written, uh, Mark being the earliest, anywhere from 55 to 65 AD. Um, that's, you know, about 30 or 22 years or so after the crucifixion. That's very, very early from historical terms. Now, again, a lot of scholars, including Bart Ehrman, will try to tell you that the Gospels weren't really written by the authors that they're attributed to, and they weren't written until much, much later. Oftentimes, they'll say second century or so before they were actually written. Um, the evidence for that is, is laughable, I got to say. It's not convincing at all in my mind. Um, most of the, ev the evidence that folks like Bart Ehrman give is what's called internal evidence, where they will look in the writings themselves, and they'll look for like differences in writing styles or things like that, um, and they will, uh, they'll, they'll say, well, this can't possibly have been written by this author. He does that a lot with Paul. One of the other things that is just frankly mind-boggling to me is they'll look at the prophecy of Jesus talking about the destruction of the temple, right, saying not one stone will be left here, and they'll say, well, this proves that these books must have been written after 70 AD because they knew about the destruction of the temple. Well, again, that's circular reasoning. The only reason you say that that means it must have been written after 70 AD is because you are assuming that Jesus was not really God and could not see the future, was not making a prophecy. You're assuming prophecy doesn't exist. But that's the question that's up for debate. And so again, that's illogical, it's circular reasoning. And more so, it's just foolishness. Because if it was written, at, you know what none of these Gospels mention, by explicitly mention? the actual destruction of the, Jerusalem, of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD. Not a single one of them says it. Well, if they were written after 70 AD, especially Matthew, all right, Matthew who's writing to a Jewish audience, all right, and he, they report that Jesus made this prophecy about the destruction of Jerusalem, and they knew that prophecy was in fact fulfilled, don't you think they'd then say, and by the way, look, this in fact did come true. He said this, and it happened. But none of them say that, which again gives... I think most reasonable historians to the conclusion that, no, they were probably written before 70 AD. The reason they didn't say it is because it hadn't happened yet. All right, That's why they didn't say it. But the other problem with this whole idea that these were written later, why well, it makes no sense whatsoever, just none, is what's called external evidence. Internal evidence looks to within what's written in the documents themselves. External evidence looks outside the documents themselves. Here's the biggest problem folks like Ehrman have. These Gospels, Paul's writings, virtually everything in the New Testament, is either referred to or quoted by the early church fathers. For example, you have Clement of Rome, you have Ignatius, you have Polycarp. These are second-generation Christians. So these are Christians who would have learned from Peter, for example, who would have learned from Paul or whatever. So they're the, the very next generation. And they are writing books that are either sometimes directly quoting or are at least clearly referring to things that were written in the Gospels or things that are written in Paul's letters or things that are written in Peter's letters. So if you want to convince me that these books were not written until the second century, well, obviously, Clement of Rome could not have been quoting from a book that hadn't been written yet, could he? But Clement of Rome lived in the late first century. So if the Gospels weren't written until the second century, then you have to take those books from Clement that were clearly quoting from the Gospels and say, oh, well, those also must have been written later. Well, then what about the books that you know, refer to Clement? Well, those must have been written later, and those must have been written later. <laughs> you end up with this snowball effect where basically you need to rewrite everything we know about these books of antiquity. It becomes ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. The evidence is overwhelming that these books were, in fact, written in the first century because the consequences, if you try to argue they weren't, are just foolish, just plain foolish, all right? Clement, Ignatius, Polycarp, well, if, if these books were written in second century, I guess those must not have been written until late second century, which means they couldn't have really been written by Ignatius, Clement, and Polycarp because they were long dead by then, you know? So we're supposed to believe that People in the late 2nd or early 3rd century decided to attribute Clement's name to books or to falsely uh, attribute Polycarp's names to books. Why would they do that? 
If you're going to make it up, maybe you make up the original apostle and say this was something that was written by Paul. But why on earth would you make up that was written by Ignatius? That literally makes no sense. And so it is, I'm sorry, I'm, getting off my, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. But it's, it's just plain foolish to claim that these books were not written when they said they were. 